So to figure out if this xenon tetrafluoride molecule is polar or nonpolar, we need to look at the Lewis structure. That tells us where the valence electrons are and then how the atoms are bonded and arranged around that central xenon atom there in the Lewis structure. So this is the Lewis structure for xenon tetrafluoride, XEF4. You can see that we have single bonds to each of the fluorine atoms. So we have our four fluorine atoms. They're bonded. They're sharing a pair of electrons with the xenon. But then we have those two lone pairs on the central xenon atom that are unbonded. So we have a total of 10 valence electrons around that atom. That's OK, though. Xenon's below period 3 on the periodic table, so it can have an expanded octet. To tell whether it's polar or nonpolar, we want to think about symmetry. It looks pretty symmetrical. That would make us think it's nonpolar. But we really need to look at the three-dimensional structure, the molecular geometry of this molecule, to tell whether it's polar or not. So here is the XEF4 molecule. And we have the green, these are the fluorine atoms, and then the xenon, that's the blue in the center. We also have a lone pair of electrons on top and on bottom of the atom. And that's because these are all spreading out to be as far away from each other as they can. While the bond between the fluorine and the xenon has a large difference in electronegativity, the four of them are pointing in opposite directions. They're canceling each other out, as are the lone pair on the top and the bottom. That means that XEF4, xenon tetrafluoride, is going to be symmetrical, there's going to be no net dipole, and we'll have no poles. If we have no poles, then we have a nonpolar molecule. This is Dr. B with the Polarity for XEF4, xenon tetrafluoride, and thanks for watching.